Welcome into the KSO Show. I am Mason Voth, joined by Derek Young. This is a special edition of the show today because, ladies and gentlemen, we have a basketball schedule. What everybody has been dying to see, 20 games in full glory, is here in front of us today. And we get to break down some of the most notable things with K-State's Big 12 schedule. So as I mentioned, it's 20 games, two Sunday games, and then some marquee Saturday games, especially at home. That's notable this year because in past years, you've noticed you know, some of those games, K-State, KU, it's been Monday, Tuesday. Iowa State last year was a Wednesday, I believe. So you're actually getting some of your marquee games, at least if you're on the K-State side of things, on a Saturday. Uh, and that's big time. Before we dive into the basketball schedule, though, one football scheduling note to remind you about, because the Wildcats are getting ready to head to Dublin, Ireland next August for the Aer Lingus College Football Classic. Join your Wildcats by booking your getaway at cats2ireland.com. The best seats and hotels will go fast, so secure your package now. That's cats, the number two, ireland.com. All right, let's get into breaking this thing down, taking a peek at what the Cats have coming here in, well, I guess just a, a little over three months from now, three months and four days, they will tip off Big 12 play at home with Cincinnati. Um, I did the the five takeaways immediately once it came out, and the first thing that I mentioned were those marquee Saturday games where you're going to get to see KU, Iowa State, and Houston all on Saturdays inside Bramlage, but also the road trips to Lawrence and Ames this year are on Saturdays. So as much as that benefits you when those games are at home on a Saturday, it might also negatively impact you when you have to go on the road and there can be even more juice into that building. Um, but that that was probably the very first thing, and I think a lot of people were excited about that, especially those Cat fans uh, that are you know more than two hours away. So if you're west of Hutch or Wichita and your drive to Manhattan is like two and a half, three plus hours, you're going – Man, those Monday, Tuesday games are brutal. Don't have to worry about that with some of the more notable games this season. January 11th, when they play Houston at home, students back yet? Mm, no, I don't I don't believe so. That, that would that'd be the only thing, but it's Houston. I I think I don't I don't worry about the student crowd size for a game with Houston over Christmas break. No, but it, it'd be nice to have that environment because the, the students do make it a little bit more lively, of course. So when would the students be back? Um, going, I'm going to pull up the academic calendar now so I can see when they that... also play January 14th at home against Texas Tech. Let's see here. Where the it's interesting to see how many conference home games you have to play without your students. So, so the spring semester starts on January 21st. So they they've still got over a week until. Uh, classes would start back up. So they probably, game. yeah. So they probably won't be there for Cincinnati, Houston, or even Texas Tech on Tuesday the fourteenth. Yeah, I would bet that that's a that might be the lightest crowd of the season, uh, the Texas Tech game. Because again, I, I I think Houston will get the uh, the crowd there, but Cincinnati might be light. Cincinnati might be light, especially when we're talking K State. Very well, could be playing a bowl game uh, at any point through that stretch, whether it's on that day or around that day. And uh, that would certainly hurt things. And we know uh, what two years ago during the Sugar Bowl, K-State played West Virginia to open Big 12 play that night. Overtime. And then, yeah, overtime. So uh, that that will be one thing to, to keep in mind. That's always kind of a crappy deal. And that's that would be the one issue with the Big 12 starting games when they do. You know, they, they, they've kept their schedule pretty compact to where it's you're going to start playing conference games and you're not going to deviate from it. Whereas some of the other leagues, like the Big Ten, they're playing a handful of conference games in November to kind of gear things up to where they have a little bit more flexibility throughout their conference season. That does mean you'll be playing at TCU and Oklahoma State when their students are not there. Big but, whoop. But that doesn't Those really... are the two weakest road, yeah. road crowds that you're going to see this year. Yeah, so, so that's what I'm saying. So that's almost like the, uh, you know, almost a negative that the, the, the two road environments that <laughs> can maybe chew into student uh, student attendance is actually TCU and Oklahoma State. They don't really have students go to their games. So uh, KU in the 18th, maybe – now they'll be there. Don't trust me. Those those students will be there. But it's interesting that that might be before they start spring semester. 
Yeah, so that's uh, something to, to take note of there. Yeah, I guess that would probably be the weekend that they'd all come back up. I have no right. doubt. So that, might, so that might be when they're even more rowdy, given yeah, that. Yeah, there's no there's no doubt that's, in my mind. I don't think K-State has that. trouble filling the stands against Houston. I don't think KU has trouble filling the stands against uh, K-State. Yeah, I'll, I'll say a few of my takeaways as you kind of already started. I point out two tough stretches and two like, like good opportunities. Uh, for K-State, the first tough stretch is right when you start. You do play a top five team in Houston at home, a maybe top 25 team at Texas Tech at home, and then have to go to KU and Baylor. Like mm-hmm. if you were to drop one of those home games, that's potentially losing three or four. So Yeah, no, I'm with you. That I, I thought that one, and then I think I know where you're going next later KU, in the year. Yep. KU, Arizona, and then the two road trips to BYU and Utah. Yeah. Uh, Obviously, KU and Arizona, you're playing two top five, two top ten teams at home. And then BYU and Utah, we just saw what happened to BYU in football. Their basketball is just as fire um, in terms of a road environment. Utah, probably not when it comes to basketball, at lesser. But I imagine it's still a really good venue and a really good environment. And guess what? I mean, the teams are going to have harder times because they're going across time zones a lot more. So road trips become a little bit more infinitely more challenging too, even if it is just going to Utah. So that's another stretch where you could lose three or four, maybe even four straight. Yeah, I'm with you. Those were the two that I identified immediately as those will be the trickiest. Now, in terms of if you're looking for a stretch of games for K-State to to kind of pick some things up, right after that, once you come back from Utah, that's the stretch where you think it could be favorable down the, you know, kind of the the end of the season. Yeah, the two good stretches I actually pointed out were – and, and it's going to chew into a little bit of a of what I said could be a bad stretch, but basically the first five games and the last five games because yep. you can beat Cincinnati at home. You can beat – you can go and win at TCU and Oklahoma State. Like we said, those are the two probably winnable road games on your schedules when you go to Fort Worth and Stillwater. And if you take care of business at home, it won't be easy. Houston and Texas Tech are good teams. But if you take care of business at home – I mean, 5-0 and oh start to league play is within reason. And as you said, uh, and perhaps the easiest stretch, I would say, is when you get Arizona State at home, you go to UCF, although KU lost there last year. Mm-hmm. You're home against Colorado. You should win that. At Cincinnati, this team is a lot better than they were last year and nearly won at Cincinnati last year. And then you host Iowa State. So all you got to do is take care of business at home. So, I mean, if you can really book in the schedule, not, now I bet they don't. But it's within reason. They could book in the schedule with five wins in the front and five wins in the back. Yeah, the, and and at the very least, you look at the start of the schedule and you think that three and zero could be in play there. And it would be the, you know another year where where Jerome Tang's able to start hot. Where last year they started off, I believe three and zero in Big Twelve play. Um, they got things in a in a good spot there. Now that in stretch, like. There is a scenario where they they only face one ranked team in their final seven games of the season, and that would be Iowa State on that final Saturday. Cincinnati will flirt with it. Arizona State might this year. Bobby Hurley's actually put some talent together, but that's always a combustible product that they have. The and problem you, with that is they got to play a lot tougher teams now. Yeah, and you and then Utah and BYU. Um, it, it'll be interesting to see what's going on there. BYU new regime. Yeah. Utah second year with a new coach. Um, now should point out Josh Eilert, former West Virginia interim coach, K State player. He is uh an he is an assistant coach uh, on the Utes roster this coming season. So that's kind of the you know the way that the season starts and ends with your most favorable stretches. I I would say because. There's a lot this year of home, home, away, away, home, home, away, away, where you're not getting as much back and forth. So it feels like you have a lot of those stretches where one loss could turn into two losses pretty easily. As we kind of saw, you know, think back to year one of Jerome Tang when they had that stretch where they played at Texas Tech and it was a bad loss. And then they turned around and it became an even worse loss at Oklahoma. Yeah. Or, or when they went back to back in the first year. And they beat Texas and Baylor both on the road. Yeah, yeah, true. So that that's when the, uh, they really arrived and reintroduced themselves to the rest of the Big Twelve. When they did that, did that especially in the manner they did, all the points that were scored in Austin, and obviously the overtime game in Waco, and and obviously still haven't lost an overtime game to this point. Uh, the only thing that crossed my mind is we were you were talking there with about Arizona State. They can 
be a better team this year and have a lot worse record because unfortunately for them, they're going to be the underdog still in a lot of games. Yeah. Uh, the other note that I had down uh, within the top three that I took away, because I had the, the two tough weeks mixed in there. Sundays are on the schedule this year yeah. for K-State basketball. Two Sunday home games that K-State will get. The first will be February the 23rd after they get back from that extended weekend in Utah against BYU and the Utes. And then uh, you see Arizona State on the 23rd. They'll take a trip out to Florida, and then they come back on a Sunday to face Colorado. So, honestly, I don't love Sunday conference games. It's just not a great thing. But here's the benefit for K-State. Um, those will be Sundays when the NFL is done, so you don't have to worry about that crossover. And then, in addition to that, K-State's getting the benefit here of the scheduling where their two longest trips of the season – are going to give them extra days rest on the back end with that Sunday game uh, where, you know, you go to Utah, you come back, and then you go to Florida and you come back. So that would be at least a positive way to spin that thing. Um, but I, I mentioned those two Sunday games because that'll be a little different for people this year in the Big 12 to experience a Sunday game. I, I'd be interested to know the last time K-State played a Sunday home conference game. I, I imagine it's happened before, and I know somebody watching or listening to this probably remembers it, but uh, I don't know that it's ever happened in my lifetime. Yeah, it's it's been more of a Big Ten thing in, in the past several years. Maybe stupid question, is that associated with the new deal with CBS, getting more basketball games? Uh, very well could have something to do with CBS wanting more time slots. I also think that that kind of comes down to, to Brett Yormark's way of – you know, he he admitted, and others have said, like they know that they'll have to open themselves up to more time windows, um, which features obviously Sundays. I, I'm glad that it doesn't involve Thursdays and Fridays, and so you're not seeing any of those like Thursday, Saturday, or Friday, yeah. Sunday turnarounds that like the Pac-12 that. used a lot. So yeah, that's at least a like positive. That. And you got more games now too, right? Yeah, yeah. It, it, uh, with 16 teams in the league, and so it's almost like a something that you might have to do. I, and I also like how they did those road schedules. Yes, it can, it can mean that you can go on losing streaks a little bit easier, but have, playing BYU-Utah at BYU and Utah on a Saturday, Monday is just smart travel-wise. Yep, and uh, KU will be in, in town that same weekend. They will have the inverse. They'll play Utah on Saturday and then uh, BYU on Tuesday. So the Big 12 takes care of the two Kansas schools in that regard. The next thing that I had down – um, I mentioned the, the long weekend in Utah. And then the other thing to point out is Cincinnati. And you came in even hotter with Cincinnati news when I was when we were getting ready to start recording this because K-State and Cincinnati, I feel like there's been some bad blood brewing there from their matchup last season. It was close. It was an entertaining game. K-State really needed it. Unfortunately, they didn't get it. And it feels like there was some jawing back and forth between the K-State and Cincy sides. Well, now Cincinnati's put together this roster that, for some reason, there are a lot of national people that have blind faith in it and really like it. I think it's a fine team. I continuously see them ahead of K State, though, and I don't, I, I don't get that. I, I think this they're State's not more talented. They're not more talented than K State, that's for sure. But I think people are putting stock into the longevity, right? The 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 holdovers. It's basically like Iowa State football this year, right? Where True. essentially everyone comes back. And I think that's why you have folks buying into them. And yeah, and you'll get it right off the bat, but that's not the only thing they'll get right off the bat. Um, like I said, obviously they play at K State right away. I mean, I forget what it was now. Um, after they get K State, is it Arizona at home? So yeah, they'll they'll play K State on that Monday, and then Arizona at home, and then they will play at Baylor on Tuesday, and when they return home on that following Saturday, the 11th, they get KU. Yeah, so you're, you're facing four of the, probably the six most talented rosters in, in the league in your first four games. Yeah, uh, so they'll get after. I, I like it because it feels like, based off the way things have already started and the way last year's games played out, it, 
it could come across as a kind of new age Big 12 rivalry. And so you get it at the perfect times where those will be two similar teams this year, at least going into it expectation wise. And so you're going to get it right off the start. Uh, and that'll be a good Monday game to get things fired off in Big 12 play. And then it gets to fester the rest of the season for the revenge game for either side when they go back to Cincinnati uh, in the final week of the regular season before K-State returns against Iowa State. So those are those are my most notable takeaways. Bob, Anything else you got on the schedule? Bob Huggins should go back to the Cincinnati-Kansas State game too. Oh. Uh, obviously, he coached both of those teams before he went to his alma mater, West Virginia. But Kansas State's – Unlike Cincinnati and West Virginia, Kansas State did not fire Bob Huggins. Very true. Yeah, that's 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 a good point. Bob should have better feelings towards K State uh, than he does Cincinnati and West Virginia. Although yeah. I think Bob was his own demise in both stops. Uh, yeah, I think he's so too. Uh, I had two more things. You get home the last three weekends, and if you're in a really a thick of a Big Twelve race, I think that's probably a good thing to get to Arizona State, Colorado, and Iowa State. So you end the year with three weekend home games. And I don't know, I'm sure that they probably tried to divvy this up as much as possible, but there's 10 weekend games throughout the regular season in the conference. Kansas State gets to be at home for six of them. So over, over half, I'd like to know how that measures up against the rest of the league. I'll have to look into that. Yeah, that's a, that's, that's a good point. At least getting that majority edge is nice. And as mentioned too, talking about games where, you know, students, may not be there um you you only end up with two i think that you're really hurt by that houston game i don't think will be a problem on a saturday um i just i still don't like the big 12 scheduling as close as they do to uh bowl season and the way that that ends up working out but we'll see how it uh it ends up looking for the game with Cincinnati to kick things off. But that is the K-State basketball schedule in conference play for the upcoming 24-25 season. 20 games for the Big 12 this year, and who knows, this may be the only year that the Big 12 is at 20 games for their conference schedule because I know that the coaches do not like it, um, and obviously fans don't like the way that some teams have put together their schedules uh, because of a 20-game conference schedule where – You've gone through and decided, hey, you know, we don't really need those tricky non-con games because we're getting even, you know, two more than what we're accustomed to in league play. So that is uh, the K-State Big 12 basketball schedule, and you can find more of the Big 12's release on their website as well as K-State putting out theirs. They did a nice video, uh, good good theming and good song selection for some of them. So uh, that was a, a nice and simple but very funny and uh, cool video that K-State did to announce their Big 12 schedule this season. So that will do it for us, and we will be back again tomorrow for our K-State Oklahoma State preview show. If you want more on the schedule release and also coverage of Connor Riley, Joe Klanderman, who spoke to the media today, head to kstateonline.com, add on three. We've got you covered there with plenty of K-State coverage, and then stay locked in right here on the KSO YouTube for full coverage of K-State and OSU starting tomorrow with the preview and all the way through Saturday and Sunday with post-game reactions. So for Derek Young, I'm Mason Voth. Thanks for watching and listening to the KSO Show. We'll talk to you again.